So let's now look at two examples of a full-blown hypothesis test from beginning to end. So hopefully you saw the first introductory videos that explained how to take a sentence like this or a claim and convert it into a null and alternative hypothesis. And the second video on the flow and the concept behind doing a hypothesis test. But we're going to walk through all the steps from beginning to end, including how our calculator will make an appearance today. So reading this sentence, it says, a majority of Butte students have a tattoo. Again, we don't know that's true. That's just someone's claim. So what we first do, step one, is convert that sentence into two possible hypotheses. Again, the word majority tells us, tells us we are in the land of proportions, and majority means anything greater than 50%, and so that belongs in my alternative, P greater than 0.50. Remember, it's not P hat. We're talking about a population parameter. Where do I get my null? It's always the complement of this. So if I'm this is saying P is greater than 0.50, then my complement is P is less than or equal to 0.50, but we also can just get away with saying equals every time for the null. Okay, well that's it. That's step one. Well, step two is where the problem brings in data or the evidence for this hypothesis test. So, We're going to imagine that a sample of 25 students were surveyed, and of those 25, 17 had tattoos. So, what can I do with NX is we can create our point estimate, my sample proportion. And 17 out of 25, grab your calculator, you'll agree is 0.68. So right now, I want us to look at this evidence, go back to our two statements. What should always be true right now is that your evidence should support your alternative. It doesn't mean it's true yet, but if I'm assuming the null is true, why would I ever switch to the alternative? I would if my evidence is strong enough to suggest that this could possibly be true. And of course, 68% is greater than 50%. A majority of students in this sample have a tattoo. So, things are moving in the right direction. Let's now see how all of this relates to a normal curve. Every hypothesis test has a normal curve somewhere in the background. I always like to include two number lines. The top one, I'll write the word proportion. The bottom one, I'll write the letter Z. Right down the middle, always is the null number. In this example, my null is 50. We're good. Once I have this set up, then I return to my evidence and ask where does 68% fall in relationship to 50? Well, clearly it's somewhere over here. The one thing we don't know that we talked about in my second video is I don't know really where 68 belongs over here. I don't know if it's really close to 50. Is it way down in this tail? And so we just, every time, just generically just put it somewhere off to the side, not too far, not too close, because that's not really the purpose here. We're just giving a structure where I'll then draw a line up and shade that tail. This, by the way, is what's called a right-tailed test for obvious reasons. And then the only the other thing I can do at this stage is on my Z number line, what would be the Z score right below my null, my 50%? Well, since that's right down the middle, that would be zero. <clears throat> okay, well, we're now at the point where we need to get a calculator, and it's gonna help us finish my sketch, and then it's gonna give us some, some final information that will help us 
uh, conclude our hypothesis test. So, no formulas. I'm going to tell you like confidence intervals. Start by hitting your stat button and then scroll over to the tests menu and for hypothesis test the one we're going to choose is number five and that stands for a one proportion Z test. So let's do this. So for this problem stat over to test number five and you'll see a few prompts. <clears throat> The first P sub zero is your calculator asking for your null, for your proportion. We know it's 50%, so you type in the decimal 0.5. X and N, that's my data, that's my evidence that we had in uh, right at the beginning. 17 students had tattoos, 25 students were surveyed. The last step is you have to describe what is your alternative. There's, there's going to be three options, and we saw that in the first video. It could either be less than, greater than, or not equal to. Well, your alternative was greater than. That was majority, so you choose that by hitting Enter. And then finally, calculate, and this is the screen we end up with. There's essentially two big numbers on this screen, a few that you'll already recognize. Um, this is my alternative, greater than 50 my sample size 25, my p hat, my point estimate 0.68. The two numbers we didn't see um, before are z and p. So let me show you, um, let me just write those down. z is 1.8 and this p is 0 0.0359. Okay, pull the calculator away. This z is the z score that got translated, 68% is like being 1.8 standard deviations away from the mean. So that finishes my sketch. So this, by the way, the z-score is referred to as the test statistic. And we don't do much with that. It just gives me a sense of translating data into a z-score. But here's the biggie. This P is what we call the P-value. And the P-value is going to help us make our, our decision on what to do next. I'm going to say <clears throat> that the level of significance, or the alpha level for this problem, is our standard 0.05. And that's all I have, that's all I need to make my decision. And my decision sounds something like this. Since my p-value of 0.0359 is less than 0.05, that means we will reject the null. Again, what does that really mean? This area of this curve actually is what the p-value is. It's about 3%. So when you look back, I actually put that 68% too close to 50. It should actually be much further down in the tail to represent just a 3% area. But again, what does a small p-value mean? It means my data was so far away from my null that my null probably isn't true anymore. In other words, we now have strong evidence that the uh, proportion of students at Butte is much higher than 50%. So my decision is to reject the null. My conclusion will be this. We have strong evidence a majority of students have a tattoo. Okay second example. More than 80% of drivers admit to texting while driving. Step one, null an alternative. 
more than 80%, that's just a greater than. So that's P greater than 0.80. The complement would be less than or equal to, but we're just going to say equals every time. My data, which will always be given in your homework, or the evidence, there has to be a sample size. And let's say there was 250 drivers surveyed, and of them, 210 said they text while driving. I now need my point estimate, my P hat. So let's take 210, divide by 250, and we end up with 0.84. So the first important number we have, my evidence. Does that support my alternative of being greater than 80? Yes, it does. So we're on the move. To my curve I go, two number lines, there's a proportion and a z-score. My null, right down the middle. 84, again, to the right, somewhere. Draw your line, shade the right tail, zero is right down the middle, and here's where we head to our calculator to get my last two numbers. Whoops, you didn't see that. Let's watch this again. So, there's my old one. Clear that out. We've got stat tests, number five, for one prop Z test. This time my null, 80%, 0.8. 210 out of 250. My alternative is still greater than, so I don't need to change that. Come down, calculate. So I'll go ahead and put my test statistic, my z-score. I just need two decimals, so how about 1.58, my z-score. Again, I like to remind you that is called the test statistic, or just the z-score. But the number that ultimately matters is this guy, my p-value 0.0569. So, again, somewhere in the problem, when you do your homework, you'll always be given an alpha level. My default is 5%. This is the, the line that separates big from small. What's my conclusion this time? Well, first of all, my decision will be what? This time, since my p-value, since 0569 is greater than 0.05, the decision is to fail to reject the null. That's considered a large p-value. Anything bigger than 5% is considered big, which means this 84 is much closer to 80 than we think. That means the null stands. My conclusion, we have weak evidence. For the alternative, therefore, the percent that text could be, we're not saying it is, but it could be 80%. Not the alternative, which said it was greater than 80%. So this is our way of saying we're sticking with the null.